Hi everybody, welcome to the instructional video on how to do your origami painting. Your very first step is to prepare the surface that you're going to be painting on and this is with a coat of gesso. Gesso is not white paint, it is actually a chalk based paint and it's used to provide a barrier between the surface that you're working on and the painting that you're doing on top. It can be used to completely block out the areas underneath or you can let them shine through but make sure you use a crisscross pattern when you're doing it. You need to hair dry that off. It dries really quickly, so this won't take very long at all, probably a couple of minutes. And you can even just leave it to dry naturally while you go and select your origami photograph that you're going to use on your piece. After you've applied your gesso, you need to do a colour wash. So this is just a very light colour and often applied with a sponge or once again you can use a brush to do a crisscross pattern but it's quite transparent and see-through and all it is for is, is to remove that whiteness that you're working on. Often when you're painting you'll have areas where your brush strokes show through the underneath area and rather than being white you have this colour showing through which just gives it a bit more of a professional look. Once again add your colour just lightly, let it be see-through uh, and then use a hairdryer to dry it off again. Okay, so once you've got your surface prepared, you need to get your image onto that surface. So the best way to do that is with carbon paper. You can freehand it up, up to you, but ultimately this is a quicker way of doing it and you're going to get the same results. You don't need to use a ruler, just roughly outline your origami pieces. Make sure you do all of the internal lines as well where those folds of paper would be. Okay, so we've got our image on our page. We've put a tabletop on there as well. The next step is to do a colour block of our base colours. So you've chosen your colour scheme. Uh, for this piece, you are going to be using a split complementary or a triadic colour scheme. And you just need to decide what colours are going to go where. So what's going to be your tabletop, what's going to be your background, and what colour is your origami going to be. And once again, we're just working in thin layers of colour. You can see there that that colour wash is showing through the ochre that I'm using, or the oxide. And so you're just building up those surfaces as you go through. You can see I'm using my brush to actually give quite a sharp line around the origami piece. You can do that or you can actually take that oxide into the origami piece a little bit. It is actually better to go inside your lines rather than leaving a gap between the edge of your origami piece and your tabletop. Okay, so either butt it right up against that line or work into it a little bit more. When it comes to actually painting your origami shape itself, if your colour is quite transparent, like the cool blue that I'm using here, you can actually paint over the top of your lines because they will show through. If your colour is not as transparent, what you need to do is leave a really, really fine gap just between the lines of your origami, just so you can see where they are. Alternatively, uh, if you have still got your piece taped to your board, you can just paint all of the shape in and then put the photograph back down and use um, the carbon paper to once again put those lines back in. Um, the trouble with that is that if you're working on a very light origami piece, your carbon paper may show through those lines. So it is a bit better way to actually paint over the lines as much as you can, um, but just making sure that you can see through that colour that you are painting it.
Okay, so now you've done your color blocking, the next step is to do your shadow blocking. And this is where you need to pay careful attention to your photograph and look at where are those shadows on your origami piece. And you're gonna use a darker value, so dark blues, dark purples, dark greens. And you're going to put in the hard edge of those shadows and then feather it out. So I find that a dry brush technique works really nicely for this. Once again, you're using very little paint. This is all about lots of layers and building up, building up, building up. So don't have too much paint on your brush and just try and look at your photograph and look at where are those sharp edges of the shadows and feathering out so that you've got a soft edge. So a hard edge versus a soft edge on the other side. So it's now time for us to start looking at the background and to start building up our texture and our colours on that background area. So I'm using a palette knife here and my colour scheme is uh, basically blues, red orange and yellow orange. And so I'm actually just picking up a warm red and a warm yellow uh, on my palette knife and I'm actually using that in my background to mix as I go through. You want to work kind of in lighter colours, we're now starting to build up our last layer that we'll be doing on the background. So we want it quite light and quite bright. Um, sorry about the um, focus on my camera, I forgot to set it to autofocus on my piece, so you keep getting my shoulder. Um, but use your knife edge as well, so you've got that nice sharp edges on the knife. So use that up against the origami piece and the edge of the table there, just to give a nice sharp edge. And think about texture, and which way you're actually using your knife as well. So you can see here I'm mainly using it in horizontal um, strokes, okay, but you may want to go vertical so that the um, pattern is more up and down and the texture is more vertical. Contrast against that textured background, we're going to do a smooth tabletop. So I've just changed to a nice big soft brush and I'm just building up my next layer of colour. So again, I'm just using a warm yellow for this and I am picking up a little bit of that orange of the background to mix into some areas just to ensure that I've got a balance of colours between the two areas. I'm ensuring that I'm getting a nice hard line on the edge of my origami piece um, because we're now starting to you know, finish off that tabletop area as well. And so you can see I'm just getting those edges in and then smoothing my brush strokes out as I go through. And in a minute, I'll just pick up some orange and blend that in around that bottom area just to darken it a little bit and to bring that balance in with my background. Okay, so now that our background and tabletop's done, it's time to start working on our origami creature. And we're going to build up the value differences in each shape that we can see within our origami piece. So pay particular attention to your photograph and look at where is the light sides, where is the dark values, 
in each of those shapes between the paper folds. If you focus on each shape as you go, you'll get more variety of values in your piece and it'll look a lot more cohesive. It's important at this time too that if you've made a particular colour for your origami piece that you keep that because you'll need it later on down the track when you do the fine details. So make sure that you've got enough of that colour made up that will last you um, quite, you know, quite a couple of days. So you're probably looking at least a teaspoon to a tablespoon of your original colour. So just work your way through. And again, we're working lightly. This is not thick paint. And what happens is that that shadow blocking that we did a couple of steps back actually comes through those layers of paint. So, and it does some of the hard work for us by doing the darker values under your pieces. So at this point, what you're focusing on is those mid values and your light values. And once again, you can see here that we're just trying to lighten up our piece as well. So I've just added white into my cool blue just to give it a bit more depth and a bit more brighter against the piece. You can see I'm also adding just a couple of highlights and flicks of white in areas that I can see um, have the highlights, but I am not paying a lot of attention to details. That comes later on down the track, okay? So focus more on the value differences within those shapes, not so much your edge details at this point in time. Your cast shadow from your origami on the tabletop is just a darker hue of what your tabletop is. So start with that. For most of you with the colour schemes that you're using, it's going to be the colour that you've used in your background. Once you've done some dry brushing and looked at where that shadow falls, then you can start to work back into it with some darker value and that will be what you use to do your shadow blocking on your creature. So if you used a violet, use the violet for your shadow um, and just mix it in with that darker hue that you've been using for the shadow. And once again you can see this is a dry brush technique. The less amount of paint that you've got the better it will be. Slowly build up those shadows. Otherwise it, if you go too dark too fast it's too hard to get rid of if you do make a mistake. Now it's time for us to look at the details, okay? And this is where you really need to focus on your edges, your highlights, and your sharp lines. So switch to a smaller brush and start off by using that darker hue that you used in the shadow blocking phase to actually tighten up those edges and to really look at where do you need to add some darker shadows into the piece. Look at how the folds go over each paper. So underneath my seal here, I had to add a little bit more space underneath where the paper folded because it was a different um, width, I guess. It, it sort of sat down a little bit lower on the stomach than what I had originally painted. So really paying attention to those details, okay? Um, you can also dry brush uh, the lighter areas at this point in time as well. So change to a different brush, a little bit of lighter hue that you're using and dry brush that into areas. And you may find that you have to dry brush some of the shadows back in as well, okay? But really, really stressing those edges. Really look at where are the lines on those edges, where are the highlights, and make sure that they look like they are actually folded paper as well. So attention to details is what will make this really successful. This is about time too that you want to strengthen your shadows on your tabletop. So just take notice of whether there are some areas that you do need to make a little bit darker or whether you need to feather out some edges as well. I kind of realised on mine that I actually had to add some of the clear or the yellow tabletop just under the belly region of my seal. So look at if there's areas where you've got to add the tabletop back in, so subtracting some of that shadow and um, work with that. Now the other thing is colour pencils. They're going to be your best friend when you're painting. They are really, really good 
to finish off those really sharp edges and fine details. So I usually use a violet, dark blue and a white. Now, a little warning here, don't use water soluble pencils. We will be glossing our work and the water soluble pencils will smudge and run. So make sure that you are using the correct color pencils, not the water soluble ones when you're doing this. So just sharpen your pencils, a really good sharp white line uh, will give you those really good highlights on those edges just to crisp them up. Okay, so go through, have fun, pay attention to those details and those edges and where the shadows and the highlights fall on your piece. Can't wait to see the finished results.